No, John, you'd be noted as a very knowledgeable local historian. I uh, believe you studied it in depth. Could you give us a quick summary of the history of the foundation of Westport and its development over the years? Yes, Westport, um, Westport, of course, the, the, the old Cahan Amart, the old Gaelic Westport, uh, existed back in the 1500s, in the, in the in the uh, it was, of course, didn't be much relationship to the present town, yeah. but the town at that time would be on what we refer to as the lawn of Westport House, and our uh, Shire, uh, I should have said the, the old Cotton of Marth, because that's what it was known as. Uh, the lawn of Westport, we were up on the lawn of Westport House, uh, and the key area, and possibly higher part of High Street, John's Row, Peter Street, etc., on the upper reaches of that area as well. But uh, basically it was in the areas I mentioned. Uh, then, uh, while we haven't any plans or maps of, of it, that is what leases and that is what tradition and records in the Sligo state papers, etc., would suggest. Uh, how the modern town of Westport, uh, various assumptions were, theories were handed about in the, when we, we started involved here in the Westport Historical Society. And uh, the early suggestions were that it, it was uh, James Wyatt, uh, uh, senior, who was supposed to have joined, designed Westport, then that a Frenchman was supposed to design Westport. Others that it was, other suggestion was that it had just come about. And then one day, I know if there is where my own in, involvement in it, a student who was studying his architectural degree was sent to Westport to get in certain information. And he was sent out to me where I was tending to cattle at that particular time. He wanted to know where the old road system that led into Cahanamarth had been. And he had in his position a message from his professor which suggested that Westport was designed by William Leeson. So that was the first that I, or indeed any of my colleagues here, had heard of this Leeson. So we followed it up and Eventually, we acquired a copy of a newspaper, Faulkner's Dublin Journal, for April 1747. And there, on the front second page of it, was an advertisement announcing that a new town of Westport was to be built adjoining the old town of Westport and that allotments, etc., were now available from the plans and specifications which could be seen at Westport. And it was William Leeson, architect, or Peter Brown Kelly, who was, later became, I think, the first Marcus of Sligo. Uh, he was, of course, the owner of the land, and this William Leeson was the architect. Now, we got various clues as to who William Leeson was. And he, appeared, he obviously was a resident of the North Tipperary area and County Galway. There's a record of his death. Unfortunately, his will was lost in the four courts in 1922. But the evidence of him, and there are many houses in, old gentry houses, we call them, in Tipperary and East Galway, which are, are designed and built by him. An interesting thing about it, uh, we're informed by 
one of the architectural colleges in England who were trying to trace this man, that the, the word architect, the individual who that would be applied to in the 1740s, today such a person would be referred to as a property developer. So that when going into the history of the design of a place like Westport, more than likely this Leeson or his colleagues purchased the site, developed it, and then passed it over to the purchaser, fully developed. The strange thing, very shortly after Leeson's advertisement appearing in 1747, the Livingston family arrived in Westport. And also within four or five years, a Hildebrand family arrived. Now there is a record, there is a record in existence, I understand. The Hildebrands came from Germany. That this record says that some man named Hildebrand, accompanied by his wife and three children, had passed through London on their way to Westport in the West Wild. So at that stage in our development, what attracted a man from Germany with his wife and family to come to Westport uh, is open to, to certainly to curiosity about it. The first record we got of him, actually a descendants of this family have been in contact with me on account of some article I wrote in the Cotton and Mark Journal where I produced a list of people from this area who had a vote in what became the election for what became Grattan's Parliament. And this Hildebrand is listed as one of the voters. Uh, his descendants were, had no record that early. They had about five years later on when he apparently gave his address as number six, the Octagon, a property we now regard as the Wyatt Hotel. Now, this is the best guess we can make. He would also be, uh, the family would also have been involved in the property we know as Cherry Cottage. Uh, Hildebrand's Quay is there to this day, Pier Lucchetti in front of it, which has a very long history. And uh, uh, the family built and operated the first post office. For, uh, they operated it for 100 years. They were here until, 19, until 1911. Uh, that was on High Street in, it's now known as McGing's licensed premises. Uh, but that was the Westport post office. For the, since, since about 1810. Now, uh, there he was also involved in a number of buildings around Westport. The old Westport RIC station, an RIC station out at L. Uh, if you go into the, the ownership of these buildings, they were all, uh, apparently built by this Hildebrand and then leased back again to the government of the day. Um, they <coughs> increased the number of the Hildebrand family. They were managers for Lord Sligo, one of them. They were one of them was manager for the Fitzgeralds in what's now Torla Park House. And one of them was out in the Connemara area. Um, but there are, <coughs> they left Westport around 1911, 1912, they died out in Westport. And they, there is still descendants in Sligo who visit Westport and know a lot of the history of it. Um, 